the only qualification that Jesus wants for you to be blessed it is a believing heart. You can pray from January to January except if your heart have believed God you will never see a blessing. You know we've got so many Christians in this country and around the world they are laboring in prayer. They are committed in following the word practicing the word but because they lack belief they do not receive from God. An avenue of blessing, an avenue of contacting God, receiving from Him, is what? Believe. You can pray in tongues, you can fast for 40 days, but if your heart has not aligned to Jesus by belief, you are what? Wasting your effort. You are a Christian who does not believe. So it means you are no different from pagans if you do not believe. Believing is the only credential that God requires for our adoption. Remember the message of two weeks back? That many Christians they've been convinced by the facts in the scripture take place because they confessed the prayer of salvation. But salvation did not take place because salvation takes place in the place and sin. Until your heart have believed God whatever that you are doing as a Christian under the sun is what? In vain. Tell your neighbor until you believe whatever that you do as a Christian under the sun is in vain. So it means you are not born again. You are not a child of God until salvation has taken place in a secret place. A place that men cannot influence. Many Christians, they are considered to be born again because we saw them at the altar call. That's why in this church, when you do a prayer of salvation, you don't even ask people to come for altar call because someone can be in the altar call and yet, does not want to live for God. Do you understand this? Salvation does not need the authentication of your mouth to take place. If your heart have yielded to God, you become born again instantly. When we confess, we are merely putting a seal. That's why there are so many people sometime in your family, sometime even your neighbors who are born again and they don't go to a church of salvation. But salvation has taken place. But every Sunday they go to Lutheran church and the state of their hearts happen to be better than your heart. It is what takes place in our hearts that make us children of God. Tell your neighbor. It is what takes place in our hearts that make us children of God. Not necessarily what we display to the world. We are caught in a trap this generation of believing that everyone who says Jesus is born of God that's why when 
people show you their colors their true nature you become shocked because you thought they were born again tell your neighbor that's why when people show you their true color you become shocked because all along you thought that they were born again you cannot find salvation next to the street. Salvation is a product of the divine well. You can't pick salvation from a tree. It is a precious gift. Do you understand me? In our generation today, everywhere, salvation is preached but it is very scarce very rare to meet salvation in truth and in spirit salvation of the Holy Spirit is very rare to find it most of us we have merely taken off the uniform but we are still in our old days. Are you listening? I said to you, most of us, we have only removed the uniform, but our hearts have not stopped following the trend of the world. The only thing that you remove is your duke. Eh? That's all that you have removed. If you can look at your life without trying to deceive yourself, you really realize that I have not really changed. I heard someone say, The rain beat the spot of a leopard but the spots never fade away are you listening the rain beat the spots of a leopard but they never disappear it is the case of this generation the gospel of the Holy Spirit is preached every day but Christian, they are still found wanting. If it is not found in the heart, then it is not of God. It is not found in the heart, then God have not sent it. The problem, our speech, preside over our hearts. That's why salvation is sick. Yeah? Our words, our mouth, preside over the sanity of our hearts. That's why we cannot meet God. Let alone manifest God. True Christianity, Christianity would power images when we take over the image of Christ. Tell your neighbor, through Christianity, Christianity will power images when we take over the image of Jesus. Have you taken over the image of Jesus? Ask your neighbor. Have you taken over the image of Jesus? When you look in the mirror, who do you see? If you still see your grandfather in you, you are far from Jesus. 
you need to ask your wife who do you see when you look at me if she say I see Lucas you must know you are far the closer we draw to God people around us don't need to go to heaven to see God they see God in us have you taken over the image of Jesus this was God's intention he said if you love me and you follow my command myself and the father we will come and build a home with you you will be in us we will be in you as I'm in the father and the father is in me listen if God is in me and you meet me who have you met you met God in the human form that's why God have sent prophets that you don't need to go to heaven before you know what is about to happen tomorrow. You know what will happen tomorrow by meeting the one that God lives inside. Do you understand? You people have been watching a testimony. A man will stand in front of people and say, This is what I'm seeing. Two months down the line, boom. Exactly as he said it. A man will say, I see flat everywhere in the country. Even in places that have never flooded. What has been happening in the country? Joburg, flooding, Northwest, flooding, Pretoria, everywhere, places that have never experienced flood. And it was said where? Here. Why? When we take our relationship with Jesus, seriously, people does not have to die to experience God. Your neighbor doesn't have to die to know that Jesus is love. They must see it from you. They must taste Jesus from you. But what is your neighbor tasting? Ask your neighbor what is your what is their neighbor tasting? You know you are their temporary neighbor. But there is a permanent neighbor at home. What is your permanent neighbor tasting? From you? Ask, ask your neighbor. Ask your neighbor. What are they tasting? Are they tasting Satan? Because some of you are born again, but when your neighbors look at you, they see the devil. You are born again, yet when you speak to your husband, you are like the one who have not met God. You are born again, yet the way you lead your house, as a man, you are worse than a man who have not gone to church. For the rest of his life, a man who have never been to church is doing a better job in leading his family. Most of you here, if God can give your wife a key of heaven. She will never allow you to enter. I'm telling you. <laughs> if God can and ask your wife, here is the key. You will decide who go in and who doesn't. While you are still in town, your wife will send angel. Please let that devil go. Take a shortcut to hell. 
We don't want that devil here. Because your partner knows you beyond what you display. You know you can lie to your neighbor in the church but your partner knows you. They know the core of your heart. So, have this conversation with your partner. If you were to rate me on a scale of salvation of 1 to 10, how much would you give me? She will tell you minus 10. It means you don't even qualify to start on 1. Listen. If you want to know that a man is born again, a pastor is a man of God. Sit with his wife. Have a conversation. You will know if this thing is playing or is true. Most of the pastors, why? When the husband is busy preaching, God like, oh, they don't know. The devil incarnates. Look at him. This one needs Jesus. Because the people you spend time with, they know the real you. If you are sitting next to your wife, you must ask her to be honest. Because this is a matter of life and death. Salvation. You can't find it next to the street. And yet, it is preached everywhere. Salvation is not necessarily a seed, but it's a final product. Do you listen to me? It's a what? A final product. Salvation delivers inventory to God. It delivers stock. Our salvation is not complete until we come to the end of our life. When you come at the end of your life, then truly we say this one is saved. You are not born again, please. Until you have come to the end of your life and you have run your race faithfully. That's why this journey we embark on it every day because it is a project that will one day end. The problem with Christians of today, the day when they say, I receive you, Jesus, as my Lord and Savior, they relax. Before they come at the end of their life, they are backslidden and they go to hell. Tell your neighbor, your salvation is not complete. of your life. You are not successful merely because you bought a mansion today. You bought a big car today. That is not success. We only consider you to be successful when you come at the end of your life and yet what you have achieved is still with you. Do you understand? People rise and fall. 
That's not success. People confess and fall. That's not salvation. Do you understand me? That's why these people who used to be on fire for God. For Jehovah. Today they are sitting in a beer house. Today some they are in ZCC. Some they are sitting in Sangoma house. And yet there was a time they spoke in tongues.